Hey guys, welcome to another video on my channel. Uh, today we're gonna have fun. We're gonna continue with our minis form setup. So um, if you see my latest video, it was essentially getting the RAM and the NVMe in it. Um, today we're gonna actually install and show you how it works. So. Currently, I don't have my amazing Sony camera um, for my actual face th today um, because I'm using my display capture card for essentially getting the output of what the machine has um, to display into uh, the stream here. Um, so hopefully um, you don't mind the quality for, for my face this time. This is my good side, just so you know. <laughs> but uh, anywho, um, we're going to be installing Proxmox on it, mainly because when I tried to install EXXI, uh, it just kind of borked on me. So um, hopefully the Proxmox install will be a slightly simpler and it will work. Um, so let's get started. Alright, so this is expected. I haven't powered it on, so let me power it on. We'll click the button so it's powered on. You can't see it, but there's a blue light. Um, it does power on. I did I, I did test that, um, which is a good thing because I was like, man, if it doesn't power on, that would be really rough. So um, now you can see it's going to start coming up here, um, and the Minis Form logo should eventually, hopefully, pop up here in the next few seconds. Um, if it doesn't, I'm going to be questioning my life okay here we go see it pops up wasn't wasn't worried at all just just so you guys know so we got we got the proxmox installation so um we'll do the graphical user interface even though i only have a keyboard and i don't have a mouse hooked up um but this is where we'll do the proxmox install um i've ran this a few times on my uh dial power edge um but i haven't migrated fully to a proxmox instance yet um uh, mainly because I mean, all my stuff in my home lab right now are uh, VMware, and it works out pretty well with all my videos right now. So uh, I have to re rework some of my automation for it to work in Proxmox. But based off of VMware's new, uh, you know, policies and guidelines in regards to uh, purchasing, I know a lot of home labbers are going towards uh, Proxmox. So this might be a good time to switch. So um, here we go. Um, my keyboard hopefully works. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll accept the terms and license of agreement. Um, so the agrees in, the I agrees in the lower right. Um, so my face being in the lower right probably doesn't help here. So let's uh, let's move my face over here. Be on the left side. It's kind of weird, but uh, um, so you can see in the lower right hand corner those next and previous. So we got a target disk. So I got a two terabyte uh, drive. Let's look at options here real quick. Um, so we got file system. Setup, RAID, um, there really isn't too much. There's a hard drive size, which is the one something. I wonder what happens if you, uh, let's leave everything as default. Let's, let's see what that brings us, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. All right, next. Um, the country, United States. Time zone is America, Chicago. Oh, I actually have to hit it. America, Chicago. And keyboard layout is English. We'll I'll set up a password here. Um, and the email, we'll, uh, we'll just do like one of our local ones um, here. And then the fully qualified domain name. So we'll do prox mox.asgard.local Oh, the management interface. Uh, that might be interesting. Let me let me see. Um, let me hit that. Okay, so one of these is so 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 this this four NICs and I'm clearly a Wi-Fi card. Um, two of them are two point five gigs. One the, uh, and then the other two are ten gig SFP plus ports. Um, I'm based off of this. I have honestly no idea which one would be the SFP plus ports. Um, let's see, i forty e. So this, that's the Intel driver, um, which looks like that's a forty gig driver. What's IGC? Nick driver. Uh, 
I kind of, I think the I-40E is what we want to go, actually. Alright, we're going to YOLO it, guys. We'll do uh, the first I-40E, and we'll, we'll essentially figure out whether or not I'm, I'm right or wrong when I plug it in later. Um, so I won't be plugging it in tonight, so um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, or at least for this video, because my, my actual lab for SFP Plus is going to be downstairs, so I need to put put it in down there um okay so the address i need to i need to go in my home lab here real quick and go check out what ip addresses i have open which will be uh, i think we'll do like 100 something let's see One hundred five, one hundred five. So we do one nine two one six eight one one oh five, one oh five. Uh, the gateway is just one dot one DNS server. I just have it on one dot two. Next. Uh yeah. We'll leave it as that. We'll see how that goes. So we'll install that. Um, so this will take obviously a, a few minutes. Um, hopefully it doesn't take too long here. But what I'm hoping to see is that it shows up as 96 gigs of RAM um, because I hope both my RAM slots are, or both my RAM that I bought um, are working. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. So we'll fast forward the video once this is completed. All right, that was actually pretty quick. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure I plugged my NVMe into the right, correct port this time. Um, uh, because I, I, I got the Western Digital with a um, PCI Gen 4, uh, 7300 megabytes per second. So um, pretty much as fast as a Gen 4 could go um, in regards to speeds. Um, I did see Crucial came out with a Gen 5 that was on sale. And I was like hoping that I would be able to get it. Um, but I don't have anything to use it with, so I didn't get it. Um, but maybe my next setup, um, if I can get a Gen 5 slot, I would totally buy it. Uh, it was like 4 terabytes for- 2 terabytes? 2 terabytes for like, um, 100. Or 200, 200. Okay, so it came back up, so I am gonna go to the base, take- shut this off actually. Um, and I- honestly, I can't- I can't even read that. Um, because it's so small. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can zoom in or not. Can I... I... Alright, we'll just... We'll, we'll, we'll pretend... Um, I know what I'm doing. Um, which for the most part I actually do. Um, so we're gonna shut it off here gracefully. That's what I was trying to do. Shut it off gracefully. Um, and not, you know, just... Unplug it. Um, so we shut it off gracefully and... What we'll do here now is take it to the basement and then plug it in and then see if we can get the GUI to pop up here. So, all right, we got everything plugged in and I got the right port the first time, guys. I plugged it into the right, correct port the first time. So, what we can, what we should be able to do is now go to um, the IP address. So, we did at 105 and the port is 8006. So, we can navigate and connect to. Uh, we are logged in with our password, um, we can ignore the valid subscription, and we are in! So we got our, our Proxmox cluster here, um, let's change the color theme right now to, uh, dark theme, because dark is always better, uh, in regards to backgrounds, so, yeah! Um, so let's check out, check out a few things, um, so by default we got our, our host, um, so let's take a look at our host real quick. We can take a look at it. We got the CPU out of 20 CPUs. We got the RAM, which is the um, 96 gigs of RAM. So, you know, give or take um, 94 here. Um, so we can see it says the correct CPU here. We got one socket. Hard drive space is only 100, but that's because we left everything as default. So it creates a LVM. Um, that is the whatever the rest is. So this 1.8 uh, 4 terabytes plus the 100. Um, plus, you know, that 
extra space um, that you would get from two terabytes. So, so that's actually all good and dandy. Um, you can see everything looks pretty good um, because nothing's actually being used um, for the most part. So, yeah, we got Proxmox installed. So now, um, oh, the last thing to look at is the networking here. Um, so essentially, uh, we want to see this is active. Um, there's nothing that we can type in here, um, but I think uh, if we do shell, um, what we can do is IP ADDR. Um, this one's active, so we can do uh, ETH tool, ENP2 um, And we can see that the support link is 10 gigs essentially, so 10 gigs. Um, so it, it does register correctly as 10 gigs to see it, which is great. Uh, which means we got 10 gig link uplink uh, with the SFP plus ports. Um, we got our our two terabyte NAS and everything, and the RAM shows up correctly. So um, everything that I bought seems to uh, be working. We don't have any uh, things that are DOA, which is amazing uh, because that's like the last thing you want when you purchase something. So, um, but yeah, that is essentially how you can install Proxmox on your uh, mini form. Um, and now I need to go learn Proxmox and convert everything over. So I'll probably make a few more videos uh, in regards to um, creating VMs on Proxmox and things like that because it's most likely going to be different than VMware, um, just ever so slightly. So, um, but if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.